How's it going guys? In today's episode, I would like to talk about animation workflows. It's a hot topic for all animators and people have strong opinions about different workflows. Is my workflow better than work your workflow? My workflow is definitely better because of these reasons. And it's basically a debatable topic that I'd like to discuss here today with all of you. So without further ado, let's get started with this episode. How's it going guys? Welcome to another video, another week, another video. I hope you guys had a great week. Now, animation workflow is basically for all those that don't know, is how an animator actually starts and ends their animation, right? It's basically the bread and butter of all animators and every single animator has a different workflow. Now, workflows are incredibly important because they become the way you express yourself in your animation and depending on your workflow you can do more or less it also depends on the level of experience that you have in animation right now there's this um, idea that the more experienced the animator the better the workflow and therefore you can actually like learn a lot more and actually have a, a faster workflow and certain workflows are really really cool and therefore you know they are the best workflows etc etc now i would like to actually kind of like talk about exactly my journey when it comes to workflows and hopefully it will resonate with some of you out there and then at the end of the video I want to tell you guys why workflows, even though they're incredibly important, they should not be something in stone, they should not be something set in stone, and why you should always keep your mind open to actually kind of like change your workflows and work in a better way. Let's get started to talk about this. So let me start by actually telling you guys that copying some other animators workflow, it's not bad, it's actually really good. Now. When you start, just like illustration, for example, if you are learning how to illustrate, for all those that know how to illustrate out there, copying your favorite artists means that you're actually learning from the best. And it means that at some point in time, you need to break that pattern and then kind of like set off on your own so you can have your own style. This is particularly um, not noticeable in comic artists, right? They normally copy each other because you look up to the artist, to the fellow comic artist and then eventually you kind of feel bad because your style is pretty much the same and then you need to actually kind of like find your own path now this is exactly the same thing for animators you, there's plenty and plenty plenty videos out there about animation workflows from start to end um, i have a video right at the beginning of this channel uh, that i showcase a little bit of um, my workflow and how that works but just know that workflows are not set in stone so for example the stuff that i showed you in my original video the god of war video that i go from beginning to end in about a few days just to kind of give you an overview of what a workflow might look like that is not set in stone because i don't work the same way that in every single shot sometimes you have time to plan a lot and go deep and like draw and really think about it sometimes they ask you for a shot tomorrow, right? Which means that you don't have time to plan, you just have to do the work. And depending on what kind of thing you're doing, you need to adapt. And this is why actually having a workflows that are set in stone is normally a bad thing because you become so ingrained with the idea that you have to go through certain steps to finish your animation that once you start working professionally, you start, you start to quickly realize that you're either really slow or you're not adaptable enough and people start kind of like questioning how long you take to do animations or how, what's your process to animate and what, how comes your animation takes or looks in a certain way or looks bad or it doesn't look up to quality or whatever it is, right? So copy somebody else's workflow that you think is good, right? Especially if you find it here on YouTube and if people like myself that is teaching you how to animate. But know that these workflows are not aesthetic set in stone and you have to learn from others to make sure that it fits your own style and the way you animate. Some people are more visual than others, right? Some people like to actually spend more time on the graph editor than others. Some people will like to spend more time in your keys and moving the characters in your viewport than others. So like workflows are not for everybody. The same workflow cannot be for everybody but when you find yours, then stick to it. That is how you start 
forming your own workflow. Now, once you go through that process of actually forming your own workflow and feeling good about it, you need to start thinking about what actually works for you and what doesn't, right? Like for example, some people that illustrate great, they actually like to spend time with pen and paper and actually getting to that, those drawings and getting the best shapes possible. There's a lot of people out there that are not, they don't know how to illustrate and they find it difficult to actually kind of like do those drawings, right? So perhaps for those people, getting some visual reference or some videos or some references and put it, stitching them all together in a video editor might be a better way of getting that reference than just like drawing. For people out there that draw really well, might be that they want to actually go into a 2D uh, piece of software where they can actually get their blocking and spacing sort out even before they go into their Maya. Now, if, if, if this is you, great. I feel you because I feel the same way. I like to think outside of Maya before I go into my Maya, but this is not for everybody. So make sure that after you copy somebody else's workflow and you start to understand how animation works from beginning to end and you start to do a few shots, a few animations that you'll be like, oh, okay. So if I started this way, I can finish it this way here. And now I understand that this work makes, makes sense for these reasons. Now, once you go through that a few times, then you start to kind of like tweak certain things. It's almost like tweaking a car. Now that you actually have it running, what else can you do to make the car run faster, right? So now you start kind of changing a few steps here and there that suits you better. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it actually backs, backfires and realize that you take longer than you than you used to, but that's an episode for another, another, another day. <laughs> now, last but not least, when you start forming your own workflow, and you start to feel good in it, then it, there's a point that you feel so comfortable within your workflow that you know that you can pretty much do everything within certain parameters, right? If you need to do a quick shot, then you follow this workflow. If you need to do uh, a, a shot that is a, a bit more key heavy, then you do this other workflow. If you need to do mocap, you do this other workflow. So you kind of develop a few workflows depending on the job and you get comfortable with them because you know it works. This is the final step and perhaps the most important one, which is don't settle on your workflow and keep on learning because what's going to happen is that if you settle on your one workflow and you don't learn different techniques, dif different tools, different plugins, different things that actually allow you to kind of like better your workflow or keep up with the times, you end up stuck, right? And the Maya of now is not going to be the same Maya in 10 years or 20 years, right? So if you want to have longevity, if you want to have a long career, and if you want to know um, exactly that you have this and you can actually animate for a long time, open your mind and make sure that you continue learning other workflows or imp improving your workflow to kind of cater to different things, right? So for example, one of the things that I mentioned a few weeks ago, or I did a few weeks ago, was this uh, chat with Unreal and Autodesk about a lifelink, right? Which is this tool, this plugin in Maya that allows you to connect Maya with Unreal and they talk to each other. Now, when I started animating, there was none of that. I was doing, I was making games, but the Maya and Unreal did not speak to each other. Now, this tool, Lifelink, right? Check it out if you haven't. I'll leave a link down below. Allows you to basically scrub your timeline and Unreal's timeline will scrub at the same time. Allows you to preview animations in Unreal directly from Maya. And it's a beautiful thing, right? Because you have both the awesome stuff that the engines can do, like cloth and dynamics real time. And then you have animation real time in Maya as you're scrubbing. And that is an amazing tool. Now, I would be foolish if I don't add that to my workflow working in games, because that is an amazing step forward into animation, into workflows, and it saves me a bunch of time, right? And it makes me a better gameplay animator. So open your mind, ingest the information, be a better animator, and then move on with the times. And that's it, basically, when it comes to workflows. Know that every single animator has its own workflow and you should never settle. You should continue improving your workflow, doesn't matter what it takes, in order for you to become a better animator and to learn from others. Because after all, this is fun. And it should continue to be fun as you go 
through the years. Now, that's all I had for you guys. I cannot miss to mention my Patreons, people that have been supporting me here in this channel. Thank you so much to all these people that you see now on the screen. If you are interested in supporting me, I highly appreciate it. I would highly appreciate it. Now, if you are interested in supporting me, I would highly appreciate it. Go and check it, check it out on my Patreon page. Once again, link down below. And if you like this content and if this was useful to you, I would highly appreciate if you actually like smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell button so you don't miss any videos. And then YouTube will be a little bit more kind to me and my channel. I would highly appreciate that. Now, that's all I had for you guys, right? Also, if you guys want to check out my Discord server so we can talk and talk about all about animation, this video and much, much more, check it out. Once again, link down below in the description so you guys can talk to me and others about the passion for animation. That's all I had for you guys. <laughs> Have a great rest of the week as always and stay well, stay safe. Peace.